Hi there, my name is FixFox, and welcome back to FixFox Shoutcasts. This is the series where you take the time to play F Heroes 2, you record those videos, you send them to me, and then I get the chance to watch them, provide commentary, feedback, and ultimately, I get to hype you up. And today is going to be a submission from Vami. Vami, about a month or so ago, provided us with the playthrough of Dungeon Below, and it was an excellent playthrough. It was some good uh, tactical decision-making. There were some smart decisions. One of the best things about that playthrough that I remember off the top of my head was that they showcased how important the secondary skill mysticism could be. Every single second of that playthrough, I was like, we're gonna go back to our mage guild and spend the night, right? Right? And it never happened because Vami knew exactly what their strengths and their weaknesses were. They knew how to adequately assess threats, and today is going to be, I believe, more of that. And the twist here is, is that this is Timothy Duncan's Last Hope map, the precursor to Thunk. This is a map that Fix Fox has also played, but I think the Vami, sight unseen, I haven't seen this just yet, but I think that Vami does a much better job of it than Fix Fox did. And so, with that being said, how do I know that? You're going to find out pretty quickly. Let's dive right in. So. As we're getting started here, uh, this is Last Hope. We are on impossible difficulty. Of course, we have to be the blue player in the very center of the map. We are Corbus the Knight. Uh, the battle is waged for years, and we have one pet dragon and an army at our disposal, and this is it. It looks like it's gonna be anywhere between, oh, we'll call it 38 of the Rangers, eight of the Pikemen, 15 of the Crusaders, 10 of the Champions, and one of the Red Dragons. And instantly, it looks like we're actually going to take Crusaders and Dragons and leave everybody else. Not a bad decision. Remember that on Impossible Difficulty, we do have no resources that we start off with. And so there's not a whole lot we can do other than uh, seek our fortunes and set off to try and do the very, very best we can. Actually, it looks like those crew, those Rangers are going to be coming with us. We have Boars. We have Vampire Lords. Of course, with a gold mine just a little bit to our upper right position there. It would make a lot of sense for us to go north, I do believe. Although, if you go south, you're going to find a lot of other resources. This is a map that has an awful lot of story elements, and that was one right there. That was the Lucky Rabbit's Foot that we caught for some special reason. We go right through the boars, no problems there. And the problem with this map, if I do recall, is that this castle, Last Hope, is the castle that is also the win or loss condition. In this sense, if the enemies ever capture Last Hope, you lose the scenario. So you are always under major duress from the enemies. And if for some reason you try and rush out and trade castles with them, you will instantly lose. As we do see Tyro the Knight take the one champion through that swamp, trying to pick up as many of these free resources as possible. So while Corbis the Knight has gone north, we do now have Tyro the Knight going south. Corbus is actually a very, very excellent hero. In fact, I do believe that they have logistics. I do believe that they have pathfinding. And given that you are right smack dab in the middle of a swamp, that's kind of a big deal because then you have a decided advantage against pretty much all enemies that the hero may, the enemies may start off with. Unless they purchase or develop a barbarian, you're gonna be feeling fairly okay. Looks like there's a spike shield to Tyro's immediate west of that position. He's picking up lots of freebies. We do have the opportunity uh, to upgrade this town. It came fairly well upgraded. It already came with the blacksmith armory, the archery range, and the peasant hut. And now we do have the arena. We do have the ability to get cavalry, cavaliers at this time. We do see Zam the Necromancer orange player for the first time. And then we saw one other enemy dive through those lifts. This is a pretty major fight. We do have 15 Crusaders. How many bone dragons he has, I'm not too sure, but this should be a pretty critical fight. Did Vami spend the time to figure out exactly how tough their forces were? Did they take the time to, to really piece this out and decide what is it gonna take for us to be the very most successful on this map. Something tells me that they have a strategy in mind. So Corbus the Knight, it looks like we're going to potentially send these Crusaders all the way down the battlefield. And it, if that is the case, I don't think that that's a terrible decision. We are on as speedy of a battle as you can possibly get, my word. Uh, <laughs> uh, thankfully, Vami is going down to six speed instead of absolutely instant. For those people who like to play on instant, I sure don't blame you. However, it does make it a little bit difficult for me, a very old fella with carpal tunnel and my eyes dimming with age to be able to see and shoutcast exactly what is going on. 
a couple of vampires are going to go down there. Of course, a good target because there's no retaliation from the vampires or the vampire lords. And so I'm very happy to see that we're kind of focusing them down. It looks like the rangers are going to absolutely obliterate two of those bone dragons. I wonder if the enemy thought about running before they even got to this point. By the way, we did lose one crusader there. Uh, at this point, with one more lightning bolt, that is going to be it. The enemy is going to flee. And this seems very fortuitous. Expert pathfinding at this point is critically important. Uh, the snow, the swamp, any penalty is going to slow you down and it's going to prevent you from achieving your goals quickly. This feels like a map where with starting one castle against maybe three, four castles that the enemies will have, you are going to fall behind unless you are very aggressive in the early game. So the pathfinding in this rough terrain is going to allow you to take some enemy castles and that will instantly help you turn the tide. Even two castles against three is still so much better than one castle against four. We do see Balagar the Warlock. He does have some dragons with him and we waltz right into this necromancy castle as we pick up the well. This is Blacksford and it's got the laboratory. It's got, it looks like a level three mage guild. I think that Corbus actually has a spell book. I say that, but I'm actually not 100% guaranteed sure about it. No, he does not. And so we're going to pick up the Mass Curse. We're going to pick up the Lightning Bolt. Pretty good spells there. We're going to see how big of a deal those are. Let's see how that factors into Vami's plans so far. But an excellent start. Rebecca did already leave the area. They saw exactly how big Corbus was, and they said, we want no part of this. Remember that with F Heroes 2 versus Heroes of Might and Magic 2, there's a big difference in how the AI plays. So... In Heroes of Might and Magic 2, the Gold Edition, or whichever version you might have originally had, the AI would often focus very, very much on that center castle. It knew exactly what the win and loss conditions were, as does the F Heroes 2. In fact, in some F Heroes 2 maps, the AI will ignore everything but that win or loss condition, and if you leave that castle completely undefended, you will suffer for it. The Heroes 2 AI, I, I, I didn't actually play through this map recently with the original gold AI in mind, but I seem to recall that this map was even more difficult on the original AI simply because the AI was omniscient and it knew exactly what your strengths were. It knew exactly where your castles were. It knew where your heroes were. And to say that you had to leave something behind was a little bit of an understatement. In this case, it looks like we're gonna potentially be able to reach this orange Necromancer, I think that that'd be an excellent idea here on month one, week one, day five, because, well, although we might be able to defend that castle from these invaders, I sure wouldn't want to take the risk because, again, this is your win-loss condition. It looks like Vami is counting out the steps, taking a look at what the movement penalty is going to be to go to the sulfur mine. Can we do both is really the question. And this is an excellent exercise for any Heroes Might Magic player to know exactly what movement I'm going to have uh, at my disposal and what is this going to cost me. Truly, uh, if you're able to do that, you're able to make sure that you are the most efficient with your turns as possible. Folks, we got a fight out here on our hands. We are certainly going to win. There's no doubt about that. But the question is, is how many losses can we prevent? This is a very similar fight to the one that we just took. And Corbis does now this time have a slow and a lightning bolt at his disposal. Let's make sure that whatever we whatever we do, let's not cast the death ripple. It's gonna be the lightning bolt. We're going to immediately take out three vampires. That's a pretty darn good use of your time there, I do believe. Curse goes on to the Rangers. And and nifty enough, um, all of the creatures here on this battlefield, by eliminating those vampires, you don't really change turn order at all here. Uh, they were going to go, oh, let's see, uh, vampires as a four speed creature. They were going to go after these bone dragons anyway. They were always going to go before the mummies. And so uh, sometimes you got to watch out for that. You got to make sure that by defeating an entire stack of creatures that you don't accidentally catapult some other group of creatures into the forefront and change your plans. Of course, if an, a faster enemy is defeated, then the next up enemy can slide into their slot and that could disrupt your plans, especially if you're using turn order, which is of course featured at the top here, another feature of F Heroes 2, uh, something that I sure like to do. That was a glorious victory, that's 1200 experience, and the losses were absolutely acceptable. I think that we've just taken out two of the Necromancer's main 
forces there. Uh, I don't know how many heroes that they start off with, but already to date, we've killed four bone dragons and where the dragons are or the warlock faction is, I don't know. I cannot say, but I'm excited to find out. We do purchase Jezebel here, 4,700 gold, 16 wood down to six as we upgrade the Cavaliers into the champions. Very nifty to see Jezebel coming on out here. I imagine that she is going to be just a supportive unit as she tries to pick up some freebies, pick up some extras. And I would love to see those 32 archers turn into 32 rangers as quickly as possible. Here's a question for you. Do you upgrade this castle in the upper right, this necromancy castle? I, I don't know if the plan for Vami is to hold onto this castle forever, or if maybe some loss of it could be acceptable. Of course, it will really determine um, an awful lot there. If they decide, well, this is not a castle worth investing in, so be it. You've already got the laboratory. You can go an awful long way with that. But perhaps they're going to say, no, no, no. Let's spend the gold. Let's spend the time. Uh, the fact that we've gotten up to champions in our castle of last hope in the very center there, though, that makes me wonder, can you upgrade two castles with the meager resources that you have been able to pull together so far? By the way, Corbus is heading on a absolute beeline towards the castle in the upper left corner that's going to be over there in the 10 o'clock 11 o'clock position and that castle of course is now a warlock castle that's potentially another week's worth of growth of enemy aggression that you're not going to have to deal with if we're able to take this castle i think that the starting forces of 15 crusaders and the one red dragon i, I think that that's really going to be enough to press your advantage early on and of course, the more passive you are in this scenario, the worse off you are going to be. This is an enemy warlock. I'm not sure who this is, but they do have two green dragons, two of the hydras and so on and so forth. This is Balagar the warlock. Look at that, two attack, two defense. He's got 11 spell power. And he's got plenty of knowledge to supplement that as well. Tyra with his two attack, three defense has absolutely zero chance. I know it, you know it, we know it, but to surrender here, uh, save the one champion. Sure, for this cost, I, I don't, I don't think you care one way or the other. Um, it's, it's, it's worth it to save the creature for an extra 188 gold. Sure, why not? Given that they already cost 375 to get in the first place, there it is, so be it. Uh, there's Timothy Duncan's information, and oh boy, we walk right into an absolutely free castle, and for good measure, Bammy's gonna upgrade his one red dragon into a black dragon. Of course, that's an excellent upgrade. Um, it's a little bit expensive to upgrade them piece by piece as we do pick up the well, which is wonderful because we go from one dragon a week up to three, which is clearly the optimal decision there. Uh, but to upgrade red dragons to black dragons, it does cost two sulfur per dragon, and it does cost a hefty bit of gold, but you get one additional speed going from five speed up to six speed. You do get an additional one attack and one defense skill and you do get an extra 50 hit points. So as far as cost analysis goes, uh, it's not a bad upgrade at all, especially because six speed versus five speed really is this kind of, oh, call it an elite tier of speed. Um, Maybe not elite, maybe elite is the wrong word. It's the absolute best of, of the normal riffraff, right? Six speed is really a quality speed. You're almost guaranteed to go first in many instances. But I suppose that elite speed is actually what you would find with the seven speed creatures, the phoenixes and champions. Uh, still though, a worthwhile upgrade, I personally do believe. Are we simply going to hit in turn? We do. And folks, this is gonna be day one of week two. And we've got three black dragons in the upper left corner. We have three bone dragons in the upper right corner. And the only question at this point becomes, how do we pay for everything? Uh, trading for one sulfur here, not too big of a deal. Maybe you walk away here with three black dragons today. Uh, maybe you, uh, you walk away with all four of them. Who can say? Uh, but so long as you have the ability to purchase out the other bone dragons before they get attacked, I think they're going to be feeling just fine. By the way, note that there is an ultimate artifact on this map. We have seen a couple of obelisks so far. It looks like Vami has decided that that is not going to be a tactical strategy that they employ in this playthrough. So um, where to go, what to do, I, I cannot say, uh, other than you might as well press your advantage while you are big and tough. We have wandered right into Falagar. Who could have, who could have predicted that? 
it seems like there is a lith structure on this map where you have uh, liths in the north and the south that are connected and you also have liths on the east and on the west it more or less turns the flat map this 2d map into a 3d sphere where the map will wrap around on itself and that seems to me to be pretty darn good as the crusaders make quick work of a couple of minotaur kings and that really makes a map that's already very small feel even smaller. The fact that you can wrap around like the old uh, arcade game Pac-Man. You go from one side of the screen, you just basically pop out on the other side. Being able to uh, control these lifts, being able to uh, find a way to be everywhere on the map as much as possible could be very, very key for you. By the way there, Balagar had 11 spell power. But when you have black dragons on your team, that 11 spell power is not going to do an awful lot. And so Corbus the Knight with his high attack and high defense should be able to clean out this map because I don't think that we're going to find a might based hero that's going to be able to contend with dragons and boned dragons. We shall see. We shall see. Of course, remember that this is a scenario where you have a loss condition. As much as it makes sense to fix Fox to try and get the Bone Dragons in the upper right corner, it may be tactically wise to prevent any possible losses in the center. If you lose Last Hope, you'll lose the scenario. So let's make sure that we try and get Bone Dragons where we can, but also let's be smart and not cost ourselves an opportunity in the very center of the map, as we do see Agar, the Purple Warlock, Fix Fox had an issue when he played Last Hope. At the very end, I realized that it was Agar the Warlock who had had Dimension Door. And at any point, they could have Dimension Doored over the natural barriers and completely ended the game. I'm very, very happy that they didn't, but it was something that I realized was a problem. And that does bring up a bit of a question for me right now. Is that fifth level mage guild that was found on the map with the Dimension Door, was that fifth level mage guild already purchased is that already here on this map somewhere or did the ai in this case uh or in my case build it up from scratch I do not know but that would be a very interesting point to to stick with so far we have not seen major damaging spells we've not seen berserks or, or some other spell that will really change the tide of battle here and i'm for that um i don't know Maybe, maybe you have to remember that with Vami only being here in the beginning of the second week, there's just no time for the enemy to play catch up. Uh, he has already struck a very decisive blow. He owns three out of the, the five castles that are here on this map. Vami could probably just hold on to what they have right now. And I do believe that they would eventually overwhelm our enemies. By the way, uh, it is Mr. Uh, Mr. Mustache, as it were. Mr. Mustache Corbus the Knight. Uh, he does have six attack, seven defense. He is an excellent combatant. And so far, he is absolutely pummeling, pummeling these poor warlocks and these other poor necromancers. Very, very sad for them. Of course, Lord Corbus, the portrait is that of Lord Kilburn, who, funny enough, if you've never checked it out, there's some interesting lore about Lord Kilburn, this portrait holder in the actual annals of Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, very, very worth noting that uh, if you're interested in the lore of Heroes of Might and Magic, he is one of those players who doesn't seem to have an awful lot of, of screen time. He's not Jem the Sorceress. He's not Crag Hack, but he does have... Uh, he has some interesting lore backing him up. We are not picking up the stables. Very interesting. We do grab the wisdom or the ballistics. I don't think you even take wisdom here. I think that you should take the ballistics. I think the ballistics makes more sense because you're going to be fighting in castles, even though you have the dragons who are going to fly right over the battlements. I still think that that would be the better decision. I just don't see third level spells really being that useful. Here is another third level mage guild though. So, meh. I do appreciate that me and Vami agreed on that one, though. So it is, in fact, not going to be the Wisdom, which most people will tell you is no brainer. Um, I think that because Wisdom and Spells are not really going to factor into this gameplay um, like it otherwise could, I think that this makes a lot of sense. We are putting our fastest creatures into Lord Corbus, and we're, of course, going to take them on day one in just a moment. Ariel the Sorceress is level one. Maximus the Knight is also level one. 
because of that third level mage guild, because it has lightning bolt, because there is the mass curse, I think that that is a good choice to pick up a magic user. There's going to go 4,500 gold immediately, just like that. 1,500 gold remaining. There's a few genies here. Rebecca the Sorceress does have a few genies. How much damage can you do? Can you stay alive? It looks like this is not going to be too big of an issue. I'm the kind of person I would love to focus on those genies and not give them a chance to do anything to me. 99 damage, so 51 hit points remain on those bone dragons. Now what to do here? The lightning bolt, probably your best spell. Can you kill the two genies by themselves? No, you might as well use the lightning bolt uh, to try and ensure that there's no issues. And there you have it, uh, 51 hit points remaining down, another nine, and then, oh, whether you go attack mummies or bone dragons or zombies does not really matter. I think that unless the enemy is gonna cast a magic arrow, or a cold ray, lightning bolt, etc. I don't think that any losses are going to accrue at this point. You're just not gonna get stomped like that. Interesting that this hero does have treason morale though. This enemy that we are dealing with, there goes the dispel magic. Hey, you're playing as the sorceresses, you might as well go for it as we do pick up the endless pouch of gems. Basically, it's a free gem mine, no problems there. Well, folks, this is an absolute blitzing attack from Vami. Uh, already cleared out the castles in the upper left, bottom left, and upper right. Now I am guessing that if Symmetry has anything to say in this kind of a map, then we are going to have to go to the bottom right. And so Vami has done exactly what you should do on this map. You should not wait. You should not be cautious. You should be bold. You should be brave. You should press your advantage. You should definitely get that Sphinx because I don't think the Fix Fox has ever gotten that Sphinx. And I'm very interested to know. So Vami, what do you say? Will you grab that Sphinx so we can take a look? Oh, wait a second. We do have Aerie the Warlock. He's got black dragons. He has red dragons. We need to be potentially careful of this foe here. Regardless, there's not much left to be done today. You might as well hang your hat on your defense and last hope. Let Lord Kilburn and his troops rest and set off in the morning. Otherwise, what else can you do? Will we see these bone dragons on Ariel get over to Lord Corbus? Will we see Ari go straight to the center of the map and try to win the map uh, right out from under us? I think that the defenders in last hope are going to be too much. We still have, well, we, we have... 5,000 gold per day coming in. We have 1,500 right now. I don't possibly see this going well for Aerie. And yet, perhaps. Worth noting, as we do see another purple warlock pop out of nowhere, we have not actually... We've not seen Vami do anything but go, go, go. Here's my question. Is Vami going for a high score on this map? Are they going to try and show us all exactly what they can do. And if that's the case, if we're going for a high score and with as few of days as possible, is chasing down small rogue heroes like this going to be a problem? If you're going for the best score possible, then I think that you have to get a little bit lucky, which is a little bit interesting. Some games that are in the speedrunning community, there is no luck at all. It's all about performing. It's about being precise with your movements. It is all about executing. But here in Heroes of Might and Magic 2, if you're going for a speed run of any kind, I do believe that there's going to always be quite a bit of luck that goes into it. So in this last hope, if we're going for this final speedy kind of game, it'd be really, really nice if some of these enemy heroes were kind enough to simply lay down and let us overwhelm them. This is Airy. I was not sure that that was Airy. I, I thought that might've been another uh, purple warlock hero. I guess that Vami was even more aware of that than I was. Remember six attacks, seven defense. We got a couple of spells under our belt here. The Dragon Slayer could be interesting. I like the steel skin even better though. I truly do. Lightning Bolt does not care about the steel skin. We are down to eight of the Crusaders and these black dragons, I can't imagine that you're gonna focus on Griffins. I really can't. We're going to do anywhere between 112 to 250 some damage to these black dragons here. Call it 112 to 225. And if you can find a way to actually to get the dragons to <laughs> retaliate and hurt themselves, that would of course be ideal, but we will see how this goes. Five crusaders left. My word, they have taken a beating. Do you dragon slayer them at this time? 
you do Dragon Slayer them at this time, they are going to get a pretty nice bit of damage off. I see no reason why you shouldn't focus on either red or black dragons here. We do kill one of the black dragons, which is very nice. And now it is down to you and it is down to me, as they say in the movie, The Princess Bride. And here it is, three black dragons with 113 hit points left. Thankfully, we have the advantage because it looks like that double hex flame breath attack is going to do absolute wonders here. I think that we are looking at potentially avoiding the damage from six hydras until we absolutely have to. That can cause you some major grief. And we are only gonna get one major shot off with the double hex attack. There's one more here available though. We take it, uh, there's still, uh, there's still four of the griffins left, one red dragon, four of the griffins, six of the hydras. Probably time to start casting some spells. You have 18 spell points left. You're doing about hundred damage 150 damage, excuse me, these Hydras, that's going to kill two at a time with 75 hit points each. Those are pretty tough combatants. Are you going to go for the Hydras now? I like that decision. You do have another Lightning Bolt. You might as well spend it. This is probably the final major fight. And if that's the case, you don't care about your steel skin or stone skin on the enemies you care about that sweet sweet 2500 experience the plus one defense and the opportunity to take wisdom or ballistics at this point i think that it's a wash either way um mass haste the the expert curse i guess you don't really mind uh, whether you take the third level spells or not it might be tactically the best decision to go with the spells for any kind of long-term situation but note that uh, a lightning bolt is probably going to be all that we need. I think that you would absolutely take the wisdom if you had titans instead of black dragons. So that way you could potentially pick up an anti-magic. You could potentially pick up, oh, some other a really nice uh, either utility or damaging spell, AOE damaging spell or something like that. But as it stands, I, I truly do believe that the ballistics uh, was always going to be my first choice when it was first offered between the basic wisdom and the basic ballistics. Let me know if you think that that's a great decision. Let me know if you think that that is a bad decision. We do see one orange, looks like Necromancer. Necromancer, Zam is back here in the desert. I think it's time to just start chasing people down. Are you really gonna fight a pack of champions? You sure could. I don't know if I would, but you sure can. We are back to just chasing people down and can we do so? I think so. And I don't think that you even really need to worry too much about an enemy backdooring one of your major towns. I think that you can just go right on through, uh, take down Zam, and hope that you can uh, stick a cork in the final castle remaining. Folks, that was orange player de being defeated there. So remember, it was us as the blue player against one purple player and against one orange player. Purple is still on the map. Orange, we are yet. Well, we just defeated Orange. He only lose three Rangers here. My word, Ariel is pretty tough. We're, we are going to fight this fight. How quickly are we going to defeat, defeat this map? I'm not too sure. Not too sure. But I'm pretty sure it's coming to, a, to an end. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be under three weeks. In fact, this may be just about right at two weeks, which as far as high scores go, I think that this is very, very excellent. I wonder if there's anywhere out there that has a sort of Heroes of Might and Magic leaderboard, uh, maybe on one of the old forums that uh, is still active or still around. I'd be very, very interested to know if there is something of a speed running community in Heroes of Might and Magic 2. I personally don't like to speed run Heroes 2. I prefer to enjoy it as a relaxing game, a relaxing experience. And yet, and yet, I appreciate the people who are very talented at the game and can do some really nifty stuff. And I think that Vami is showing me something that I really enjoy. And that was coming into a scenario like this with a very good plan and then executing it very, very well. There were only a few instances where maybe things could have gotten just a little bit scary. For example, there was the one orange necromancer who was bearing down on Last Hope, and Vami was trying to make sure that they got their steps correctly. Um, it would have been a real shame if they had gone to the sulfur mine and then not had enough movement points to jump on that necromancer. If the necromancer was able to get through the swamp and get to last hope and the scenario would have been lost that could have been absolutely devastating of course that did not happen and so 
Call that skill, call that uh, intrigue, and call that excitement. So Vami has done wonderful for us. There's Falagar again. He has been rehired. I think that a couple of bone dragons are just gonna immediately die. Remember, Falagar's got 11, 11 spell power, now down to nine. Nine spell power, where did that two spell power go? I do not know, I cannot say, but so long as there is a chain lightning or any kind of spell, we're going to have to be pretty on the ball in order to win this kind of a fight. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that the lightning bolt is doing minimal damage. I think that this is actually a time where you want to damage those two single stacks at the bottom. Falagar is going to blow you to bits over time. You have to hope that the bone dragons can kill these big stacks there, and you just want to get out of this fight as quickly as possible. It looks like that was actually not necessary. Turning a loss into a victory there, it didn't seem like it was a lot that Vami did to really make that happen. Maybe just the one use of that lightning bolt was enough to really make things go correctly. Maybe it was just a little bit of a reroll on the dice. Maybe the dice and the, the damage was a little bit more favorable and maybe this time you were able to kill all the gargoyles and uh, that was enough to keep Balagar from fighting you any further. Tough to say, I, I do not know how that fight changed so drastically. But I'm always excited to see what the future will bring. Two black dragons are very, very far away from our enemies in the bottom left, but we are deciding to wait. And the reason being, I am sure that, well, it looks like we're not gonna have to do too much here with Corbus. It looks like it is gonna be Jezebel the Barbarian who's going to end this scenario. Can she defeat not one, not two heroes, but maybe even three heroes. Perhaps there's gonna be one that's gonna be in this Warlock Castle in the bottom right. Folks, there is definitely a fourth level mage guild on this map and it does have chain lightning. Now here's my question. Is there a fifth level mage guild? Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to find out. And here's how I mean, um, after we, well, I guess we are. It is a fifth level mage guild. I, I was thinking to myself, oh, we're not gonna be able to find out because uh, the map's gonna be over. We're gonna kill all of our, these enemy heroes that are wandering around. And after we kill them, we take the castle and that's it uh, because of order of operations, we do see that that is a fifth level mage guild. And I wonder, this warlock castle in the upper left is only up to a level three mage guild. Remember, we took that in the very first week. Does the enemy on impossible difficulty have so, so, so many resources that they can simply end this map through the use of mage guilds? I, I have to assume that they do. I, I have to assume that they just have a very distinct advantage in that way. Otherwise, you know, who's to say that you can, you can ever beat this scenario. Not only are you overwhelmed with forces, but you're also gonna be overwhelmed with spells. Um, is this is this a normal thing where maybe all the mage guilds start off at level three and then the AI just decides to finish it off for themselves? Uh, I'm gonna have to assume that that's the case. It makes the most sense. Maybe it is, and maybe it's not. Folks, this is a glorious victory and purple player has been vanquished. The enemy is beaten, your side has triumphed, and we're going to see Vami coming in the clutch with a score of 389, 17 days. Oh my goodness, that was absolute masterfully done. Goodness gracious. That is a, that's maybe the highest score I think I've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, Whoa. the highest title that you can achieve. Whoa, shut up, Levy. Levy, of course, is a, is a chess international master who, uh, who does a lot of commentary. Them and Agincourt are two of the people that me and my dad like. Um, but Vami, um, that was an excellent playthrough. And I gotta tell you, I do like that playthrough a little bit more than Dungeon Below, simply because there was more strategizing, there was more action against the enemy player. Um, and I think that you've acquitted yourself very, very nicely. Uh, and really, very, very well done on the high score. I, I'm very interested to find out the things that Vami says, hey, Fix Fox, you missed this, you didn't talk about this, or you saw something and you misinterpreted my intention uh, in this playthrough because I think the Vami has uh, demonstrated some masterful control in the battle and uh, definitely some preparation work on this scenario. And so I'm very excited to see what they have in the comment section about this scenario. Folks, remember, if you are interested in being featured on Fixed Fox Shoutcasts, please uh, check out the description of this video. I just need to get some way I can see your playthrough, whether it's on YouTube, whether you send it to me via email, whatever the case, this is my pleasure 
to do this Fix Fox Shoutcast series. Vammy, thank you so very much for the playthrough. And folks, until I see you next time, look after you. Look after your friends. Look after your family. And until then, I'm out. Bye-bye.